Andrea, during Entelechi's life, it, it's also had this advocacy stream of work. Could you explain what that means and how it developed in the organisation? I think it came from a particular interest of mine and in the more academic areas that people had never had a voice. They'd never been making decisions for themselves. And because of the new liberalisation of the ideas of how you treat people with learning disabilities, it became important that they have a voice in the plans made for them. And it came out of that interest because I was involved in a lot of debate about how they could make their voice heard. And there was a lot of debate amongst people with learning disabilities with people first being built up. And um, the service I worked in was keen to promote the kind of advocacy where you had somebody who would visit you, get to know you, work out what they thought your interests were and support you at meetings to make plans and that was at a time when part of the theory was that it shouldn't be anybody connected with the service and it was quite hard to find where these people would come from. There was a sum of money, again quite often things are money led um, the sum of money was available and Enteliki bid for it because they saw another side of people and got to know them and saw potential in them and they did express themselves through the medium of drama and performing arts in ways that made it easier to advocate for their interests and it was a way of putting yourselves in their shoes that I felt that Enteliki could do and promote very well. And um, that's how we got the contract to start with, to provide the advocacy service. And then it spun off from Enteliki because it wasn't directly about the arts work. Although I feel very much that it sprang out the values of the arts work. And that was how it continued. In and how did it survive? What happened to it? 